Hey folks, it's Greg and Janet. Today we're out at the Grove Hill Memorial Park Cemetery in Dallas, Texas. Sorry for the noise. They're doing some landscaping work here. They just cut down a huge tree and now they're grinding it into pieces. But we're out here to see the Von Erich family, the legendary wrestling Fritz Von Erich family and his sons who are also legendary wrestlers. The family name is Atkinson. They changed the name to Von Erich because Jack needed a stage name as a German Nazi heel guy. And Von Erich was the perfect name. So it kind of stuck with all the kids. But the wife said, no, I'm not going to take that name. Here is the Atkinson family plot. Well, actually, they're all over right in this area. But this is the headstone for Jack B. Adkisson Sr., also known as Fritz Von Erich. August 16th, 1929 to September 10th, 1997. Beloved father. Now, he lies right next to his son, Carrie Jean Adkinson also, Adkinson, also known as Carrie Von Erich. February 3rd, 1960 to February 18th, 1993, Romans 835, Walking with My Brothers. And lying right next to them is Doris Juanita Smith Adkison, November 18th, 1932 to October 23rd, 2015, Proverbs 3128, Her Children Rise Up and Call Her Blessed. Now, Look at all the mementos that fans have left here. And they clean these up on a regular basis, so they're getting lots of visitors, which is really nice to see. I did notice that one rock somehow made it over here. This is Amazing Grace. Put that back here. Doris was Fritz's wife. Okay, Jack Barton Sr., okay, um, he actually died of lung cancer that went to his brain in his Denton home. Okay, his wife Doris, the mother of his six boys, died of emphysema, okay, um, and she died in Hawaii, but they brought her back here because that's where the roots are. Now, the, uh, Carrie is their third son that passed away. Uh, all these, all these uh, boys and Jack wrestling heroes. Um, Legends and Hall of Famers. Absolutely. And the WWE Hall of Fame 2009, the entire family of guys were inducted to the Hall of Fame. They were uh, tag teams for the, world champions for the NWA, uh, champions for WCCW, champions for WCWA, you name it, they they did it all. Uh, tag team for Tokyo, um, um, the Arizona state champions, everything. They did everything. They were awesome. And they had a great, great legend, uh, legendary following. As far as, uh, let me tell you about the, the, they call it the, the Von Erich curse. All the boys have all died except for one named Kevin. He's the only surviving uh, male out of this tribe, okay? Okay, Kerry actually shot himself in the chest, in the yard, in the family home in Denton. Okay, he used a 44 caliber to shoot himself. And he had um, lost his foot in 1986. Um, he had an injury and then he started trying to use it too early. It got infected, they had to amputate it. He actually performed with a boot on. And even fans to this day didn't know that he had an amputated foot. And with all the pressure, the, the actual 
I don't know, mental distress and not able to perform like you're supposed to. He did have two children, Holly and Lacey, and they're still living. But um, it's just devastating that someone would take their life like that. But we have more information of all the other guys. They're right over here placed in another 30 or 40 yards away. Let's keep going and talk about them. If you're not a wrestling fan, which I was on Saturday nights, a lot of times there wouldn't be much to watch on TV, so I would watch wrestling. Fritz Von Erich was known for his move, I guess you'd say, the Iron Claw. Yeah, and actually there's supposed to be a film produced this year called The Iron Claw about the Von Erich family. Now, as far as their production, where it's at at this point, I don't know, but it's supposed to be released this year. They started last year, uh, 2022. Okay, so that's pretty cool, the Iron Claw. Ooh. Now, if, if you don't follow wrestling, but you're like, a, let's say a, a football fan, the Von Ericks are like Roger Staubach was to the Dallas fans in football. They were a legendary wrestling family. And they helped build wrestling up to the point where people like Hulk Hogan and The Rock, guys like that, became infamous and world famous because of wrestling. Had it not been for the Von Ericks, the later wrestlers probably would not be nearly as popular as they are today. Okay, this is the gravesite of Jack B. Atkinson Jr. Born September 21st, 1952, died March 7th, 1959. He was only six years old. And this was LeVon Eric's first son. He died in Niagara Falls in their home. In a he was electrocuted in a puddle of water. I've been trying to find out how could that happen? But he was six years old. Their first son died at the age six, of course, but electrocuted in a puddle of water at their home in Niagara Falls. Okay, then they came back to Texas. Well, I know a Atkinson family, Jack grew up in Texas. And what took him to Niagara? I haven't found that out. But they came back to Texas. And then they had David in 1958, which I think he's over here somewhere. They're kind of spread out. Mom and Dad's way over there past the bushes. I mean, yeah, they're over there. And Carrie, the fourth son. And then we've got David here. He's number three son. Okay, number two, Kevin, is the only one that's surviving, okay? He was born in 1957. He has a daughter named Kristen. Here is the headstone for David Ad Adkison, also known as David Von Erich, July 22nd, 1958 to February 9th, 1984. The Yellow Rose of Texas. Okay, David had a tragic death. He died in Tokyo with an intestinal disease. And it was called enter, enteritis, something, enteritis. It, it caused severe dehydration, um, you know, diarrhea, um, that type of stuff. And so he died in Tokyo. He must have been over there for a wrestling match or event yeah, when it happened. Yeah, because they did a lot of stuff overseas. But, you know, he had an issue with his health anyway. He was born, he had asthma, and it had stunted his growth. He was only 5'5", five five, and it always felt like he wasn't up to the family par. He always felt that he wasn't the best, and he was trying to keep performing regardless of his health issues, and that's probably part of his downfall because he, he did have a lot of problems because of his asthma and he, tr he was trying really hard and kept per performing even though 
you know, his, his body just couldn't handle it, and he always felt subpar to the the other boys. Okay, so anyway, that's part of the family, you know, tragedy. Michael Adkison, also known as Mike Von Eric, March 2nd, 1964 to April 13th, 1987. John 1125, in a better place. And they all died so young. Yeah. Well, he actually overdosed. He did write a note, a suicide note, left it. He died at Lake Louisville in a sleeping bag. I was living in, in Louisville when that happened. I remember that. Oh my that. gosh, really? Yes. And it was in Placidil, which they don't even produce anymore because of the b abuse of the drug. It was a sedative. He felt that he could not take it anymore. He wanted to be with his brothers. He, five days before that, he had a DUI. And when he got released, you know, um, he just couldn't take it anymore. The drug abuse, the depression, that kind of thing just took over. And they found him four days later, four days later in the sleeping bag. That's tragic. That is just totally tragic. Chris Barton Adkison, Chris Von Eric, September 30th, 1969 to September 12th, 1991. Psalm 13, 5 and 6, peace at last. Okay. Now he also wrote a note. His brother Kevin was trying to talk to him, trying to get him out of his funk, you know. Knew something was up. Uh, he'd been in trouble. Uh, he had a, a lot of problems also with drug abuse and stuff. Um, he shot himself in the head. He was actually on their farm out there in Chandler, Edom, at the time, up on a hill. Yeah, they owned a 500-acre farm in Edom, Texas, or Chandler, Chandler. Texas. Yeah, um, yeah, five, six hundred. Uh, but um, he was sitting up on the hill. One of the bro brothers talked to him for a minute. I think it was Kevin, actually, because he's the only one left, I guess. But came back down and he ended up shooting himself in the head with a nine millimeter. Yeah, a nine millimeter. And that's a, just something I can't get over the people that keep doing this to themselves and hurting the other people of the family. And, and that's probably why he, he probably wanted to be with his brothers thinking it'd be in a better place. But the Von Eric curse, the drugs, being performers, trying to, you know, stand up to the, that name. I can see people getting overwhelmed, but not to that point of suicidal tendencies and stuff. There's all, all the boys had problems like with drugs, alcohol, depression, trying to be the best of the best. And I, I don't know how Doris even went through all of it being their mama. It just goes to show you too that it doesn't matter how important you are to your fans or your friends, you can still suffer from depression. I mean, these, these boys performed in front of thousands of people on a regular basis and they were the kings of the wrestling world right and then they would go home to themselves mm -hmm. and they still ended up depressed kind of remind me of janice mm -hmm. joplin when she said every night i go out on stage and i make love to twelve thousand fans and then i go home alone right these these boys and their lives being performers um and same with like david had issues with brittle bones and injuries the injuries and stuff they like a broken shoulder then they got addicted to the painkillers that type of thing that's how it starts with the painkillers and then 
then they get hooked on that then they need something stronger yep. when they stop working you go something bigger and worse and worse and worse and yeah. it's just a spiral downhill right and with the injuries i think chris had broke his shoulder uh you know one you know one losing their their foot but then even some of the kids their kids even started into wrestling a couple of the boys michael and ross and lacy one of the girls they all did some wrestling so it still was in their their genes they wanted to perform it just doesn't make sense to me though these were all young fantastic looking kids yeah i mean they really were i mean these were the guys that if you happen to be in high school with them these were the guys you looked up to because these were the guys that were great looking built really well and yeah. all yeah. the girls were attracted to yeah. and yet they couldn't find happiness in this life right so, all right sad guys. situation but as you can see all of the mementos left by Bing. fans and friends and family yeah. These guys were well loved. They made their mark here in on this world and they will go down as the first family of wrestling. Yeah, for sure. But all right guys. Well, thanks for watching. It's a tragic story, but you know, these people that are in the limelight, you don't know what's behind the door. Mm -mm. You know, but mm -mm. you guys, thanks for watching. You know, be safe, be happy, love each other, and thank you. Take it. Strange RV tours will take you places With Greg and Janet's smiling faces You might see a crazy flavored soda review Or some tips to fix your RV too So come along won't you join us, friend, as we discover what's around the bend? Just sit right back in your easy chair. Strange RV Tours is on the air. Strange RV Tours is on.